Everything is so expensive right now. So here's 50 plus things you can buy and freeze right now or freeze now before it goes bad. We have all been there throwing away that bag of greens that goes like slimy and gross. Despite our best intentions to eat that whole bag and be healthy, a lot of times it just goes to waste. And that's why I always freeze spinach. Fresh spinach, though it has a lot of water, actually freezes beautifully. Most of the time, I just throw the entire bag straight into the freezer, or you can do like a tub that can also go straight in the freezer. When you freeze it in the bag or a box, it will clump up and freeze kind of in a block, but it's really easy to just break apart a chunk for however much you need. You can use this frozen spinach straight from the freezer. I like to throw it into smoothies, eggs, omelets, soups, Anything that you really need just like wilted spinach in, like pasta, that's really good. The only con is that you can't use it like fresh like you would in a salad, but you don't have to par cook it. All you need to do is just stick it in the freezer and then you can take it right back out and use it. Don't thaw it, but use it straight from frozen. If you do thaw frozen spinach, it will become really mushy and gross and kind of slimy, so don't thaw it before using. And if you really want some extra credit, you can put your fresh spinach out on a cookie sheet and then freeze it individually and then you can kind of gather all those leaves up and then put it in a freezer safe bag for storage. But I'm just a little too lazy for that. All right, the second thing that you can freeze right now is sandwiches. You can make your sandwiches the night before or whenever you have time to, and then wrap those sandwiches individually in some parchment paper or put them in a little plastic baggie and then stick them in the freezer. You can do this with ham and cheese sandwiches, or you can do this with peanut butter and jelly. Just think of it like those Uncrustables that you see at the store, those freeze and thaw beautifully. Here's a really quick tip. If you are not storing your frozen foods properly, you're just going to be throwing away money and your food later in a frozen form rather than fresh. Make sure you're using the right storage methods when you freeze your food. I like using my food saver machine because it takes out all that air, sucks it all out, and then you can have really fresh, nicely vacuum packed food. Next is shredded cheese. For some reason, everyone seems shocked when I tell them that they can freeze cheese. Shredded cheese is really nice to have frozen so then you always have it on hand to make soup, grilled cheese, salads, quesadillas, or really anything that you use shredded cheese for. When you freeze shredded cheese, you can throw the entire bag of shredded cheese straight into the freezer and it might clump up so it's a good idea to kind of lay it out flat as best as you can so then it's easier to break up later. Another idea is to take a large bag of frozen cheese and divide it up into smaller bags. That way you can just take one out to thaw in the fridge the night before and so then your cheese never goes bad. You can freeze pretty much any kind of cheese. So I've got some shredded cheese like this and it's pretty separated. So I can just put this directly into a tortilla to make quesadillas. I can top it on a salad and just kind of let it thaw for a couple minutes before I start eating. And that way it never goes bad. Just keep in mind that once it thaws, you won't want to refreeze the cheese. In addition to shredded cheese, you can also freeze block cheeses like this. This is just a little block of Parmesan cheese that I have. It's a little bit harder, but you can grate this straight from frozen or you can put it in the fridge overnight to let it soften up and thaw. One thing with block cheeses to remember is that it might be a little dry and crumbly after you freeze it, but it still melts just the same. I also freeze soft cheeses like this. This is my favorite porcine cheese and it will mold if it's in the fridge too long. And so I like to just put this in the freezer and then it's really crumbly and easy to use even straight from frozen. So I'll just kind of chip off a little bit and then put it on my sourdough toast. This is a block of smoked Gouda cheese that I have in my freezer. For this, it's like such a large block that I would recommend and cutting it up beforehand into smaller pieces if you'd like, or you can just plan on using the whole thing next time you thaw it. One thing to note is not to ever shock your cheese. So if you're going to put cheese into like a really hot soup or a hot sauce, don't go straight from frozen to the really hot dish. Otherwise it can be really gritty and it can clump. It's just not really great. That shock in temperature isn't good for the cheese. You can also freeze cheese slices. Just make sure that they're not like totally in one huge block. Otherwise they'll be hard to get apart. I always freeze feta cheese, mizithra cheese to put on pasta, Parmesan cheese, and a soft cheese like ricotta is really nice to have for like pancakes, sauces, anything like that. The next thing that you can freeze to save money are vegetable scraps. I always have a bag of vegetable scraps in my freezer. So whenever I'm chopping up vegetables like carrots, 
onions, celery, zucchini, any of those little odds and ends, those bits and pieces of like the root or the stems. I put those all in a bag to make bone broth. When the bag is full, I'll just throw all those vegetable scraps into my instant pot with a chicken carcass from Costco. And then I make delicious, healthy homemade broth. The next thing that you can freeze right now is bread. As we know, bread can mold really quickly. And so it's nice to be able to just put it straight in the freezer. You can place the entire loaf of sandwich bread that's been cut up straight into your freezer and then you can pull out slices as you need them. You can put those frozen pieces of bread straight into the toaster and then they will toast up beautifully. Just add a little extra time. If you have a whole loaf of bread that has not been cut up yet, I recommend cutting it up into either slices or chunks so then you can just pull out what you need without having to defrost the whole thing. If you have a couple leftover hamburger buns, hot dog buns, anything like that where you have just these little odds and ends, put them all in a bag in your freezer. When you have enough, you can use them to make homemade croutons, breadcrumbs, like a French toast casserole or bread pudding. Any recipe that uses a lot of those little bread odds and ends, you can use those. The next thing that you might want to freeze this summer is pie. We're a small family, so we almost never finish a whole pie. What I like to do is to first refrigerate any leftover pie to kind of firm it up, and then I'll cut it into individual slices. Then you can wrap your individual slices of pie in plastic wrap like this, and then freeze them. That way, when the craving hits, you just take out one piece of pie, defrost it, thaw it overnight, or you can warm it up in the microwave the same day. You can also do the same thing with cake. I highly recommend cutting up any leftover cake into individual slices slices or slabs and then wrapping them up tightly with plastic wrap and sticking them in the freezer. These will thaw beautifully overnight in the fridge and then you're ready to eat them. While we're on this topic, can I please just say never say de-thaw something? That is like my biggest pet peeve. If you de-thaw something, that means that you're going the opposite of thawing, so it's like freezing it, so it's just thawing or defrosting, but not de Thawing. All right, now that that's out of the way, I have a quick tip for you. If you don't know if something's going to freeze well, this is a super clear and simple trick to give you permission to freeze something. So if you go to your grocery store and you walk down the frozen foods aisle, anything you see in that aisle is pretty much okay to freeze at home. So you know that there's a whole aisle of frozen pies, frozen vegetables, frozen potatoes, frozen dessert, all of those things you can freeze homemade and at home home. So if you're wondering if something freezes well, just go down the grocery store aisle or think, can I buy this frozen already? If the answer is yes, then freeze away. The next thing I always have in my freezer is butter. Butter freezes pretty much forever. And so it's really nice to always have in your freezer, especially because the price of butter has like doubled. Oh, it is so painful. You can freeze butter in a tub. You can also freeze just the sticks in the box. Just put the whole thing in the freezer, thaw it when you need, and then you'll always have fresh butter. The next thing that I always freeze is yogurt. You can freeze yogurt really well. And I use the frozen yogurt in smoothies or as a starter for my instant pot yogurt. My kids have recently started liking those gogurt tubes. You can totally freeze those and it's like a healthy little snack. To freeze yogurt, I don't like to put the entire huge tub of it in the freezer. I like to divide it up into little small cups in like little silicone muffin tin liners or in an ice cube tray. Here's one you may not have thought of. It's freezing seeds and nuts. Seeds and nuts have oils in them and oil can go rancid. So when I buy a big bag of nuts during the holidays for baking or eating, I always keep them stored in the freezer. Freezing nuts and seeds allows those oils to be preserved so they don't go rancid and you can use them straight from the freezer. Next is something that goes on sale a lot, so I'll stock up when it's on sale. It's cream cheese. Freezing dairy is a little iffy, but cream cheese freezes pretty well. It might be a little clumpy once you thaw it. And so to get around that, just make sure that you whip it up really well, incorporate everything back together, and it'll be totally like normal. The next thing that you can freeze is fruit. Obviously we know that we can buy frozen fruits, but here's a couple tricks and tips to make it even better. First, you definitely need to clean your fruit before you freeze it. And it's super important to get them as dry as possible so then you're not freezing ice crystals on top of your frozen fruit. 
I really like to freeze stone fruits like peaches. I like to peel them and cut them up first. Berries are good to freeze. Grapes are delicious. And of course, bananas. If you want to freeze any of these fruits, just make sure that you're freezing them individually first before you put them in a bag or container. For example, this banana, I would peel it first and then cut it up into manageable chunks. Or you can even just like break it up in half or however big you want the pieces to be. Then you'll put those pieces out on a cookie sheet that's been lined with a silicone mat so they don't stick. And then you need to freeze them individually first, then put them in a bag. Otherwise, you'll just have an entire block of frozen fruit. The next thing you can freeze is jam. I always make freezer jam sometime during the summer when berries are at their lowest price. But if you need to preserve your jam, just put it in a mason jar or any other type of container that will allow it to freeze. If you'd like to freeze your jam, you just need to put it into a mason jar or a freezer safe container. Since jam has a lot of sugar in it, it doesn't really freeze all the way. So you can actually just use it straight from frozen. Just scoop it right out of the jar. It's like slightly frozen and then you can just spread it onto warm toast and then it will be thawed almost instantly. Okay, Martha Stewart taught me a really good trick on how to preserve your avocados. So if you have avocados that are about to go bad or that they're fresh from the store and you don't know when you're gonna use them, just stick them in a jar of water in your fridge and those will preserve your avocados for a long time. It will extend that shelf life. If you have avocados that are already almost going bad and you don't want to use them yet, you can freeze them. To freeze avocados, cut it open and slice it into slices or chunks and then freeze them on a cookie sheet like the bananas and then put them in a bag. You can thaw frozen avocados and use them just as you would fresh avocados or you can mash them up and use them that way. Next is something I do almost every single summer is freeze zucchini. Almost all of my neighbors have gardens and they're so generous with their summer and fall zucchini harvest. And if I can't eat it fresh right away, what I'll do is take the zucchini, shred it up and then put it into individually portioned bags and stick them in my freezer. When I want to use it, I'll thaw it out overnight in the fridge and use it for zucchini bread, zucchini cake, zucchini muffins, or like soups or stews. You can even use it in spaghetti sauce. It will just kind of melt. And so it's a really good way to get extra veggies in any of your foods. The next food I always freeze is raw meat. Now I know you're probably familiar with this and you do it too, but if I ever find meat that's a really good deal, then I'll definitely buy extra and put it in my freezer. Most of the time you can freeze it directly in the package it came with, but to extend the life of my frozen meat, which is super expensive right now, I'll put it in a food saver bag and vacuum seal it. I especially do this when I buy a bulk package of ground beef or ground sausage. I'll portion it out into one pound portions and then freeze those for easy use and thawing. So along those same lines, you can also freeze cooked meat. I almost always have leftover stew meat or shredded chicken, shredded pulled pork, pot roast, and those all freeze so well. I take any leftover cooked meat and I'll also do those food saver bags and then I'll have them ready to go that I can throw into enchiladas or soups or any type of dish that needs just a little bit of meat. So nice to have on hand. You can also freeze deli meat. So if you buy a container of deli meat for sandwiches, just portion them out and put it in the freezer for later. Another thing I always freeze are meals. I know you're familiar with freezer meals, but here are some other meals that I really like to freeze. If there's anything that takes a really long time to prepare, I'll almost always double it and then place the extra one in the freezer. For example, if I'm making enchiladas, I'll make the whole pan of enchiladas that we're gonna eat for dinner tonight, and then I'll put the other batch of enchiladas in a freezer safe dish and just stick it in my freezer. When I want to cook it, I just cook it in my oven for about double the time, and then I have a really easy, wholesome dinner. So just think next time you're making lasagna, enchiladas, pot pie, make another one, store it in your freezer, and then you always have something ready to go on those busy nights. The next thing you can freeze easily is soup. Almost anything that doesn't have noodles in it can freeze really, really well. 
well. If you have leftovers, I would recommend freezing it in those super cubes. Have you heard of them? They're like those silicone giant ice cube trays specifically meant for food and soup. You can also freeze them in individual sandwich bags and then thaw as you need it. I have a video with four amazing freezer meal soups that you assemble and then you put in your Instant Pot. They're so delicious and I know you'll love them. So check out that video next. Okay, I know I mentioned this one a little bit earlier, but the next thing you can freeze and you should freeze are rotisserie chicken bones. You really can't beat the $4.99 chicken from Costco. It's so good and it's always such a good deal. So what we like to do after you eat all the meat off of it is actually keep the bones and any of that leftover skin and meat that you didn't eat. Put all of those pieces into a gallon sized bag and then when you have enough, you can make bone broth or chicken broth out of that chicken carcass. It adds so much more flavor to soups or really anything that you use broth in when you make that home homemade broth, so good. You don't even need the vegetables, but all you do is throw all those chicken pieces into your Instant Pot, cover it with water, and I like to add a little splash of apple cider vinegar, some salt, peppercorns, and any herbs if you want, and then cook it for 120 minutes, that's two hours, and then it will extract all of that goodness out of the chicken, and it's so healthy for you. After you cook it, you can let it cool, and then you can use that broth right away, or like what I do, freeze it. The next thing I always freeze are are tomato sauces. If you have leftover spaghetti sauce or tomato soup, those freeze beautifully and then you don't have to do work the next time. Along those same lines, something I always freeze is tomato paste. Whenever I have those cans of tomato paste, I almost never use the whole thing. Most recipes only call for a couple tablespoons at most of tomato paste, so don't waste the rest. What I like to do with tomato paste is to scoop it out in one tablespoon portions onto pieces of wax paper or parchment paper and then freeze those individually and then once those are all frozen I'll put them in a bag and I'll always have tomato paste ready to use. If you use a lot of fresh garlic in your cooking garlic is amazing frozen. What you can do is just put all of those fresh garlic cloves in a blender or food processor mash them up and then freeze it. So a lot of people like to use those ice cube trays or you can also do the same thing as the tomato paste drop it into little portions and freeze it that way. The next thing I always freeze is ginger. Fresh ginger makes a huge difference, especially in Asian cooking. Fresh ginger is like super essential. So I always keep a knob of ginger in my freezer. You see that it's not even peeled and you can just peel it straight like this and then I grate it from frozen. It might take a little bit of extra strength to grate it from frozen, but honestly, it's really not that hard. Most of the time I don't even peel this, but if you wanted to, you can just take a spoon or a knife and just peel little parts of the skin off and it's ready to use. I just just keep it in this bag like this. And I always have fresh ginger. If you want extra credit, you can always just do the same thing as I said with the garlic and peel and blend your fresh ginger in a blender before you freeze it. And then you can portion it out and freeze it like that. The next thing I like to freeze is chocolate and candy. If you ever see that the chocolate in your pantry has kind of a white film over it, that means that it's not super fresh. You can freeze your back stock of chocolate chips, chocolate bars, chocolate candies, anything that like is already wrapped in the freezer. All summer long, we host fire pits in our circle and we always have s'mores for everyone. So what I like to do is if I ever see chocolate on sale, I'll just buy a whole bunch and store it in my freezer. So then we always have chocolate bars that are fresh, not gonna melt for our summer fire pits. The next thing that I've actually never done before, but I know that you can is freeze eggs. If you want to freeze fresh eggs, you'll have to crack them first. You can't freeze them in the shell. So what you need to do is freeze them in a little silicone muffin liner like this or anything else that's going to contain them so you can freeze. I've heard people have lots of good success freezing raw eggs like that and then you have to thaw them and use them just like fresh. You can also freeze cooked eggs, but don't go out and just freeze a whole batch of scrambled eggs. The only way I really freeze cooked eggs is when I make breakfast burritos. You can make a really yummy breakfast burrito filling with like hash browns, sausage, bacon, and eggs, and then wrap that all up in a tortilla with some cheese, wrap those burritos individually, and then stick them in the freezer. Those ones thaw and cook perfectly well, and they're so good. The next thing that you can freeze is citrus. So if you have some lemons, oranges, limes, anything like that that might go bad, you can actually freeze them whole. You can also use that 
frozen citrus zest and the juice. Something that I always do is double the mashed potatoes when we're making them for friends or company for dinner. And then I always have a portion in the freezer ready to go. Mashed potatoes freeze beautifully and they thaw perfectly. You can freeze them in individual portions like little mounds on a cookie sheet and then freeze those individually. Or you can freeze like a whole tub or a pan of mashed potatoes. You can also do the same thing with mashed sweet potatoes. You can freeze beans. So if you make a lot of extra black beans, pinto beans, anything like that, you can just freeze them and they thaw really well. The next thing that I mean you can freeze but I don't really love freezing it is rice. If I ever freeze rice, I only ever use it once it's thawed in fried rice. That's because when you freeze rice, it becomes really dry. Now this is perfect for when you want to make fried rice, but if you want a really soft, fluffy, steamy bowl of sticky rice, eh, it's gonna be pretty hard to get that from frozen rice. So you can freeze rice, doesn't mean I really love to. Now before I tell you the last thing I always freeze, I wanna tell you a couple things I never freeze. The first thing that you really shouldn't freeze and that doesn't freeze well is melon. Melon has tons of water in it and so when you freeze it, it freezes all those water molecules in the food. When you thaw it, it just becomes really, really watery. You can freeze melons if you're going to use them in a frozen application like if you're going to eat them plain or if you want to blend them into a smoothie or something, but I don't recommend freezing melon. Next, while you can freeze kale or spinach, you cannot freeze lettuce. Lettuce is like 99% water and so when you freeze it, it also gets super mushy when you thaw it. That's one of those things you really just have to eat fast. You can freeze a lot of vegetables, but you can't freeze cucumber. Cucumbers have a ton of water in them and they don't taste good frozen, so you can't really thaw them or use them after they're frozen. The next one is cooked fresh pasta. So I love making my homemade egg noodles for my famous chicken noodle soup recipe, which I'll link here. But if you have fresh pasta, once it's been cooked, it doesn't freeze well. So if you make my chicken noodle soup recipe, I would take all those noodles out first and then freeze it. Otherwise the noodles will break up and get really kind of mushy and turn your whole soup gross. You can freeze a lot of cooked noodles like lasagna noodles or even spaghetti or pasta, but homemade, I don't recommend. The last thing I never freeze, which you can, is milk. Maybe that's just because my family drinks so much milk that it's never a worry for us to drink it before it's gone bad. You can freeze milk, but I find that the flavor, consistency, texture, it all just seems a little off once you thaw it, so I don't really recommend freezing milk. All right, the last thing I always freeze is berries. Berries are one of those foods that freeze so, so well, but you shouldn't thaw them unless you're going to use them in like a sauce or something that you're going to cook them down into. So to freeze berries, always wash and dry them super well and then cut them into the portions that you want. Especially for strawberries, I don't like freezing strawberries whole because they're really large and hard when you try and like blend them. It's better to cut or quarter them. I recommend using a silicone mat when you freeze anything individually like I've said in this video over parchment paper. If you use wax paper or parchment paper or even foil, a lot of times when things freeze, they stick to them. And so you'll have all these like frozen bits of paper all over your food. It can be super annoying to peel them off. However, if you're freezing berries that are almost about to go bad, just remember my trick to prevent them from getting there in the first place. Berries are super expensive almost all year round. So it's super important that you eat them or preserve them in some way before they go bad. Thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> okay, make sure you go watch my everlasting berry hack video next here and we'll see you next time. Bye.